So um, I wasn't sure if Tim was going to teach the next tune in his set, but um, I, I guess he's not going to be here this evening. I'll, um, I'll teach the next tune after uh, the Whistler at the Wake that I taught yesterday, which I think is the old flail. Yes. If I'm not mistaken. Yep. So um, why don't I play the tune that I played last week? Yeah, let's go over that. A couple oh. times through. Is that all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to mute. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, it's in D. Um, I know a couple of you weren't, weren't here last week, so I'll, I'll go through it slowly. Um, uh, maybe three times and then I'll stop and then I'll, I'll show you what uh, the old flail sounds like. So this is Whistler at the Wake. Earth Wake, and then um, I'll do uh, the next one in that set, the old flail. Forget the B part. The B part. 
That's a whole lot of G arpeggios. Um, it's kind of a bear on concertino until you get it figured out. Is it? Yeah. I can, I can imagine. Okay, so, uh, hey, Renzo. So the, the first phrase, uh, starting on the, the D note. slower. And again. One more time. And then the next phrase. Going up to the high B. Um, let me see those two together. So that should be a phrase right there. Those two phrases together will be and again. And one more time. I'll start with that. Okay, next phrase. Uh, so um, starting with that high A.
again. So those three phrases together sound like this. phrase is starting on the uh, D and again So all four of those phrases together make up the first, first time through the A part. And again. time okay I'll play it through uh, six times maybe six times now just to give you a feel for it So basically, um, the, the A part is playing that phrase through twice, and you can put in different roles or um, triplets in different places to kind of mix it up, but it, it's basically um, the same thing. So um, to play the A part twice, it would basically just be... Anybody have any questions on that? Is that all right? Okay. You doing all right, Lauren? Got there? Okay. The B part, it's gonna start on the on the on the E note, and then I'm gonna go straight to a A and do like a trill with the B. Like the so it's like a pull off, just a real quick B note, accenting on back to the A.
and you don't have to play that that trill on the B it can just be to simplify it or then the next phrase just going from the E up back up to the A and again so those two together sound like that next phrase so from the from the D so um, I'm doing kind of a pull off or a, a trill on that on the G natural going up to the A those together something like this and again One more time. Okay, everybody got those all right? Okay, uh, the next phrase, starting on the G. down to the low E from from IG down to a low E okay all those together Again. And one more time. And then the next phrase is just like the the opening phrase at the beginning of the tune. So I'll I'll play through the whole B B part um, maybe four times, so you get a sense for how it all goes.
How's everybody doing with that? We're all good? Okay. Okay, I'll uh, I'll play it through uh, the whole tune through three times slowly. See how it goes. are familiar with the tune it's a vincent broderick tune and just like the uh, one you taught last week was a vincent broderick and usually i mean it's so common to play those tunes together uh the first one that you played and then this one it's almost yes. almost um like, not a given but you know it's ubiquitous it's, yeah good is that is that the word? <laughs> and yes, and they are uh, they are flute tunes. They're written for the flute, um, but a lot of fiddle players like playing them too. So really, anybody <laughs> anybody can enjoy playing them. Yeah, pipers. Tristan. Pipers, Tristan. That's right. Yeah. 
And that B part is really flutistic. What? Yeah. That B part is really flutistic. Yeah. 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 You know, I didn't like I didn't like this tune when I first learned it. It took a couple of years for it to grow on me. It's fun on the concertina. It really comes easy on the concertina. Well, yeah, once once you figure it out, it, it is pretty easy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I was able to figure it out. Yeah, it was You're a, a nice tune. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I came in late. What was the name of it? It's the Old Flail. The old Flail, OK. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Speaking of the pipers. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Yay. We were just we were just saying that pipers like to play the old flail. Ah, uh, I have to learn that. Oh, well, you just missed it because Eric just taught it. But uh, he's recording, so when he sends out the recording, you can learn it. I got a lot of work to do on these tunes. I've been concentrating on a few that nobody else knows. All right. And uh, to the uh, uh, sacrifice of everything else. Yeah, I do that too. So handsome, handsome young matings was a disappointment. I don't like it in A, and nobody plays it in G. <laughs> uh oh. And one of the reasons I don't like it in A is because I don't have a G sharp key on this chanter. Oh, you don't, and you can't half hole on uh, on the ch on the chanter. Yeah, it's kind of hit and miss, especially when you're playing it fast. Oh, okay. Alright. So I guess it's a solo tune. I'll try it on a whistle. I got. I don't know if it'll uh, it'll do any better with a uh, um, a C whistle. I'll have to experiment with it. Yeah. You know, some some things are easy on a different playing on a different key whistle than uh, uh, than a D. Yeah. We'll have to get you to teach it to us someday in in G, so we can all play it together. There's your solution, Tom. Yeah, get everybody <laughs> else to change. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I noticed in looking back at the, uh, uh, um, the the tunes on the session, um, most of them, most of the ones that are posted are in A. There's uh, the second most is in D, uh, so I guess that's the second most played. And then there was one in G, which is the one I gravitated toward. Yeah. And then the discussion down below said uh, pretty much the same thing that uh, uh, basically I have no idea why somebody posted it in G. <laughs> Plus it was a piper without a G sharp key. Anyway, what's going on? So uh, we can, I think we can get started with the. Uh um slow session or does anybody have anything that they wanted to go over slowly that we could um any tunes that wanted to be reviewed or i had a question sure uh, the tune that ashley taught um she was a few weeks ago she was talking about i think she called it a roll on the fiddle yes what yeah what is a roll on a fiddle like uh the ornament yeah, it's like a, it's, um, it's sort of a triplet. I don't know if anybody else has a better way to describe it. Yeah, you go, you, you hit the note, one above, one below, but you do it so fast, it's really kind of a... Yeah, it's very fast. Oh, like a trill, but using one above and one below. Yes, or yeah, not. and it's very fast, almost to the point that you can't... You can't distinguish the notes above and below. They're going so fast. We'll, we'll see what that is on a harp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Usually like a dotted quarter note. I mean, although there's a there's quarter note rolls too, but typically you'll hear them a lot on dotted quarter notes. Okay. So they're a little bit longer anyway to get all those notes. Yeah, cuts 
and taps or cups and taps? I think we call them different things. Um, uh, I think of a cut as a single note that's interrupted by um, like a break. I, that's the way I think of it. Rolls have been taught are you but yeah sure yes oh i see what you're saying yeah it's like a combination of like two of the together it's together a roll and a tap together i couldn't hear you jennifer or a cut and a tap together yeah yeah cut and a tap and then if it's a short one then you um what do you even call that short roll well, yeah, a short roll over the like cut right into the note, so you don't it's, you don't play the note first. You cut right into it, and then you get yeah. Okay. A year ago, I would not have known these things. <laughs> Something like that. I took a workshop from Yvonne Kane at Goderich, uh years ago, and she's. It was like on ornamentation, and she starts out, and she's like, "Okay, we'll start with the very simplest one." And she's like, "She's like, let's start with a couth," and everybody's like, "What's a couth? Never heard of a couth." And she's <laughs> like, people are like, "Say that again." She's like, oh, "Couth," <laughs> and you know where I'm going with that. It's like finally it dawned on us. Oh, a cut. Gotcha. <laughs> yes, it's just a note, and then as you're playing it, you. You strike your finger on the string. Ah, cut. Okay. A couth. A couth. I wouldn't have gotten that. Like someone who's uncouth. That's right. Couth. Like so, a cut for a fiddle is like the the same pitch twice. Yeah, I think so. It's like a it's like a like a a quarter note that's broken up into eighth notes by your finger flicking across the string. We have a, I, I think I know what that equivalent is on a harp, because that wouldn't work on a harp, but I think it's a, I can't remember the name. You can do a cuts on harp. Then I don't under, then I don't understand what you're describing then. Well, you're describing something if it's uh, like uh, two of the same note separated by a cut, but sometimes you just cut above into the note below. Like a trill? Nope. Just a single. One, one little note, like a... Like a grace note. A grace note. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. A cut is a grace note in classical music. <laughs> There we go. Thank you. <laughs> so, rolls, if you're thinking classical music, rolls are like mordants. I mean, I, I think that's a, a dirty word. <laughs> but it's like a mordant. Okay. Ah. Gotcha. See, I thought you were saying, like on the fiddle, like you're bowing the string and then hitting the string with your finger somehow. It didn't make sense. Yeah. All right. I'd like no, to see that's you enough about ornamentation. <laughs> I'd like to see you use a bow on that, on that harp. Uh, people do it occasionally. Really? Yeah, for special effects. Um... The bow's curved? Uh, they just yeah. used a fiddle bow. Huh. Uh, so like, more on this, like on a big one, because you have a few inches here at the end. Uh, okay. There's more more space. You, although, I don't know, I got three inches on this one on the bottom. Could probably fit a bow in there. <laughs> but. I've never done it, though. I've just seen it. Okay, well, um, if we want to get going on the slow session, uh, let me see who's up first. Um, I haven't filled out the list here yet. Um, it would be uh, Becky. I think you're first. I'm going to um, skip today um, the tune I was going to play. I'm not up to par yet, but I was playing the YouTube video practicing this tune. Charlie Piggott. I mean, he's. You guys know Charlie Piggott, the fiddle player. I've heard, yeah, I've heard. I've heard of him. Yeah, 
he's got a really good uh, you, um, on YouTube uh, um, one on fair, fair haired boy that I've been practicing. He plays with his son, and it's just a blast. You should try and play with him, Fran. Um, it just, I just um, because it's the same Claire music that I get from my teacher. I could play with him and the same stuff. So, but I was I'm I'm not ready to play it. But um, it was really a lot of fun today practicing with him. So, so but I'm not going to play anything. I always I always thought his name was pronounced Peugeot. It could be. But well, I I heard but Frankie. She said Piggott. Piggott, my yes, name. and I've heard Frankie Gavin talk about how he knows him and he said Piggott. Yeah, so, my, my teachers played with him before. I mean, they're close. I think they were neighbors or something. I yeah, I think that must that must be the right pronunciation. But she says Piggott. I, yeah. I think Piggott. So, yeah. Uh, um, he's a really a lot of fun and they don't play really fast. So um, it's easier for me to play with him. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, uh, Joe, uh, it's your turn then. Okay, how about um, start us with, uh, I'll play uh, The Mountain Road and then The Musical Priest and okay. then The Gaskin and maybe just play them through twice. Okay. That's all right? Sounds good, yeah.
Oh, there was that. What was the last tune? Called the, last one? the Shaskeen, the Shaskeen reel. I had that one at one point, and now I don't quite so much. I thought I had it too. I kind of bobbled it a little there towards the end, but. Oh, no, you did a whole lot better than I did. That's for sure. Okay, uh, Jennifer, it's your turn. You got one? I do. Um, I think the voice of the lock. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how it's going to go. And um, I don't really have anything to play with it at the moment. So I might play it twice and if it's actually decent, then I might try it again. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. No, that's not it. That's it. <clears throat> Was great yeah i could have i could have gone through that a couple more times <laughs> to work out my uh my mistakes thanks jennifer um let's see uh renzo your turn give it a shot Okay. Been, been playing around with Braze the Busby for a bit. So okay. No known tune or not, but. Okay. Do you have it?
very nice. You know that what was, was what was that called again? Braise a Busby. Braise? Yeah, Braise, as 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 in Scottish. It came from. Oh, okay. presumably immigrated from Scotland to Ireland. And, and I see. And became part of the Irish. Uh, the Braise of Busby. Did you know yeah. that, Fran? I thought I did, and I don't. <laughs> but you, but you had heard it though. Yeah, but uh, not not enough to uh, follow along much. Yeah, right. So I really don't. Know. Okay, uh, Tom, you're up next. I was thinking about passing, but uh, we'll uh, we'll try an old favorite here. Um, haste to the wedding, and I buried my wife. Sounded so cool. That was really good. <laughs> That's a good Great set. Great piping tune, that last one. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Okay, I'm going to say farewell. I'll see you guys next week. Okay. okay. Yep. Everybody. Okay. Good night, Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Fran, uh, it's your turn. I was thinking of the humors of Kilclore 
and Mickey Callahan's. seem like very many of you know it. <laughs> so I'm going to stop while I'm behind. I can relate to that, Fran. What was the I first know. one? Was the Tumors of Kilcloer. Okay. Uh, it's on that Blue-Eyed Rascal album. Yeah, I was going to say I know it, but I didn't know the name of it. Okay. Okay. Of or sometimes they call it Kilty Clower. Kilty Clogger. Okay. Kilty Clogger is how it's called. <laughs> this doesn't mean anything. Oh, all right. I don't want it. Amo Flynn plays it as well on one of his albums. Yeah. Mark, it's your turn. If you got one. I might be able to drag something up. Um, Still thinking we probably should still be a little bit in the slow section. Yeah. I'll take my mute off here. Um, maybe the uh, I always have trouble remembering the name of this tune. What is that? What's the name of that tune? Name that tune, someone. I know how to play it, but I don't remember the name. The Blackthorn Stick. Ah, uh, thank you. I guess. Okay. Ding, ding, ding. I'm sorry. What is the Blackthorn Stick? Ah, <laughs> ding. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sorry about the mess ups. I'm not usually playing them that slow and it, it's difficult sometimes. Thanks for playing it slow because I could play with you, thanks. Good, well, that was the goal. Yeah, slow, slow can be more, more challenging if you're in the groove of playing it fast all the time. Yeah. Did anybody um, watch the Crossroads Kelly mix show from the ARC? Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty good. It was really good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I watched it too. It was very, very good. I didn't know Mike um, sang. Never heard him sing before. Oh yeah, Mike. He he good. sings quite a bit. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know. I knew he played the guitar and he taught my daughter the violin, but I didn't know he sang so well. She's a, yeah. Too? Yep. Yep. Rachel was there. And Enda Enda Riley was there. Yeah. He is so bloody good. He's very, very talented. Yeah. 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 I enjoyed that. They played um, Loftus Jones. And I wanted to try to work that up. But it's such a, that is a difficult tune to play. But I, maybe I'll, um, do another O'Carolyn tune. Um, O'Carolyn's concerto. I have to take off. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye, Laura.
That was so good, but you drove my dog crazy. He barked the whole time. <laughs> He's just just barking. <laughs> but it was great too. <laughs> but it was great. You played it great. Oh, thank you. That was really good. That was lovely. Thank you. Speaking of Loftus Jones, who's the banjo player that uh, uh, plays that so well? I hear him on uh, Pandora a lot. Morrison, somebody or somebody Morris? I'm not sure the the version I'm most familiar with is Kevin Burke and um, Patrick Street. I'm not I, I'm not familiar with a banjo player that plays it. I'm not sure, Tom. Sorry. Did you play it in G or D? Uh, Loftus Jones or uh, oh, Carolyn's Concerto? Carolyn's Concerto. That last one, um, I think it's in. It's really D. D? Yeah, yeah. I think it's D. Is that right, Renzo? D? Yeah. I say D. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, back around to uh, Becky. You got, I know you, you didn't want to go the first time. Yeah, I know. You're, okay, okay. Sure. Joe? You got one? How about, um, I have two yellow goats. Um, okay. And then, um, then I, I learned a polka to go with that just recently, um, riding on a load of hay. Okay. Well, just...
was that last one, Joe? Called Riding on a Load of Hay. Riding on a Load of Hay. It's an E minor. Is yes. Right? I think, yeah. Strangely enough, you want to get two things out of it. It takes a wonderful slow air. I oh, bet. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, somebody played it around here. I heard it recently, and then I heard Tristan play it like last week or two weeks ago, and I was just like, oh, a sign. I should learn the tune. <laughs> yeah. So I'm still working on it, but it's I, I enjoy it. I like it. Yeah. Thank you for, and Franz sent me, or you told me about the uh, Liz Carroll playing it. So that's pretty much what I'm following, what she did. Cool. Mm -hmm. So, um, was it was it you, Joe, that got that saw that Aggie Witt recording on Bandcamp, or where where did that come from? Um, wasn't it on Bandcamp? And it was on also the uh, ITMA, I think. Okay, yeah, I I bought that and oh great, some great stuff on there. Yeah, yeah, really nice. Yeah, it's really interesting. I was listening to it. I can't remember what tune, but she surprises you with a few different notes than you would have thought here and there. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool to hear, like, you know, Father Kelly or, you know, uh, Michael Russell or um, who else is on? Oh, Patty Fahey plays on some stuff. So you're just like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Some nice guest guest appearances there by some like like names. Yeah. From a, yeah. From, from a generation ago. You know. Right, right. I had never heard of her until until that that got pointed out. It's really great stuff. Yeah, I, I was saying it's like I find myself like I'll have it playing as I'm doing stuff around the house. And I keep hearing, it's like loaded with familiar tunes, but they're played nicely and you're just sort of like, oh, I know this. What is this? And you go look at, you know, you kind of kept finding myself going back to the, you know, to, to check what the names of the tunes were because I kept hearing ones that I that was familiar with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In a really good way, you know. That's, that's fun to discover something like that. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Jennifer, it's your turn. I do have another reel. I'm, it's getting close to my bedtime. Um, so okay. It's going to happen. Um, cool. It the, the New Policeman, or I think it's okay. called Tipperary. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Nice. I love that tune. That's great. Nice That's the new policeman? There's two of at least two of them with that name. Surprise. Yeah, the, okay. There's like the whistling policeman or something and the a Bells of Tipperary. Bells of Tipperary. Bells of Tipperary is yeah. yeah. Speaking of that tune, Joe, where's um Jim? Um Did he just decide to stop coming? I think I sent him a note. He no, he he actually plans to join up. I think he was having some computer issues. Oh, okay. They're both he and his wife are both doing well and everything. I was just kind of inquiring, seeing how they were doing. Yeah. Um, and he still watches the uh, the videos um, that from these sessions, so he's trying to stay current. Oh, he'll talk to you about him. Hi, What's that? Oh yeah, hi Jim. Hey Jim. <laughs> hey, Jim. How's it going? But he, that was a the Bell Temporary, the new policeman was a big favorite of his. It's, he's a flute player, so maybe that's a, a good flute player's tune, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, sounded great. Matt Malloy. Oh dear. There's just like a heavenly <laughs> it is. It's like magic. I don't know how he does that. I can't remember what he plays it with. But I tell you. Yeah, he well of course he's like out of this world. This is on that old, like it says Matt Malloy album. Oh yeah. And it's just like, and literally, I don't know how he does it. It's just beautiful. Yep. Yep. Uh, Renzo, I think it's your turn. By these guys, a street player and jug a punch. Okay. Not Fran, you know that one. second in a 
interrupted by a telephone that has a flute on it. <laughs> anyway, let me pick that one up again, just because it's a good one. It's a very haunting tune. What's it name? is, yeah. What's the name of it? Very nice. And, and, and I get to use my fancy keys. <laughs> That's Junk a Punch. Junk a Punch. Junk a Punch, right. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a D minor tune. Yeah, lots of flats in there. I get to use my F natural. Yeah. So Tom, it's uh, it's your turn. Okay, um, a couple of polkas. Okay. Uh, uh, Jerry O'Connell's and uh, Din Terrence. Okay. Are those known? I'm not sure, not by name, but at least for me. Okay. But that's all right. That's all right.
a little rough on that second one. Those, uh, that's part of a set of three tunes that uh, Chambers, or uh, Evan Chambers. Yeah. Uh, well, what's the third one? Class. What? What's the third one? Well, I think that's the second and third. I don't know. Well, what's the first? Oh, no, the third one. Uh... <laughs> That didn't sound familiar. No, okay. Right. You, got a, you don't have a name for it, huh? Well, I don't remember the name for it. There <laughs> is a name on it. <laughs> yeah, those were, those were definitely uh, recognizable to me. I, yeah. I was able to play along a little bit. Ah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Shifting my leave, too. Good night, everybody. Okay. Good seeing you, Renzo. Take it easy. Will do. Uh, let's see. Fran, you're up next. Okay. I'm going to... You guys probably won't know this tune. Got it off of uh, Not Fear Bold, you know, the um, Cormac Begley, Jack Colby album. Okay, yeah. Attempt to play it. Uh, I've only been fooling on it for a little bit, but I think I've got, got it. Sounded good, Fran. Yeah, those are nice. They're catchy. Very catchy. Yeah. Is that the one from the Fearbolg album? Is that what you said? Yeah. Old John Kelly's. Cool. Mark, you're up. Yes, sir. I'm up. Hmm. Uh. Um, uh, let's see, I think it's called, uh, Lady Anne Montgomery, maybe? Ah, screwed it up. 
Nothing like messing that up enough. That's all right. I haven't played that one in a while. It's a good Apparently tune. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really nice tune, though. Yeah, yeah. It is a fun tune to play if you play it well enough. Yeah. Uh, what do I want to do? Um, I guess, um, do we want to, uh, I was going to play Tripping Upstairs, I guess I'll do that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Hey, Eric. Yeah. Do you, um, you're, the tone that's coming through seems a bit squashed. Is it? Do you have like your, your original sound? I have it turned up, turned on. And I, I was anybody no else notices, notices that, but you know, like other people that play, I hear them much more clearly. I noticed that on the recording that I listened to last week, that whatever I'm doing is not sounding very, it, it, you're right, it's like compressed or something's not. It's almost like your gain is turned up or something on your on your microphone or whatever. Really? I, I don't know. Does anybody else have that same? I'm just trying to help Eric out a little bit. A little yeah. Bit, but uh, actually, Mark, uh, coming through on, on my and uh, yours is uh, your audio is motorboating a little bit. Is what? Is motorboating. Motorboating. Yeah, it's it's kind of fluttering. Uh, uh, that's uh, no, that's my plane. <laughs> no, that's what you're talking as well. So it's not just your plane. Oh, he's got bad service. I got really sucky internet, so. Oh, that's uh, probably that, what it is. That's probably what it is. Out in the sticks than, than uh, you do, Mark. You should talk to him about his service. What service do you have, Tom? Me? Yeah. Um, um, Xfinity, um, Comcast. Oh. Yeah, I don't get. I don't get that. I don't get anything. I'm too far off the beaten path. They don't. They won't run cable to me. Oh, so. okay. That explains it. Here, let's see. I I um I adjusted my um my gain a little bit. Does this sound any better? I don't know if it will. <laughs> Is that better? Yep. Should I turn it up? Should I go more? Or less? I think you could go a little more. Better before. Okay. Better before. Just by a little bit. Try this. Okay. I think it needs less, less, less gain. Okay. Well, folks, I'm going to probably call it a night. I think it's, yeah, it's about that time. About that time, right. Yeah. Uh, Ditto. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining. And uh, we'll let you know if that um, that workshop's going to happen in a couple of weeks. And the that Fiddle Frenzy workshop is this weekend, if any, any of you guys want to join it's you can do one day or you can do the whole thing or they, they let you do it one day at a time so just something to do <laughs> what you don't have enough to do Eric <laughs> not on the weekend I don't I'm working like crazy during the week and the weekends are boring me to tears But that's the way it goes. No such thing as a weekend for me anymore. See you guys. Yeah. Okay. Good night, Joe. Good night, Joe. Good night, Joe. Good night all. Good night, Thanks everybody. Thanks for the tunes. Yep. Um, yep. Good night, friend. Good night. Good night, Becky. Good night, John, boy. <laughs> hey, Mark, are you still um, yeah. thinking I can come by this weekend or uh, maybe? Uh, maybe. Um, it's a, it's a little iffy yet. I'm uh, I'm gonna guess no, just because I want to make sure. So um, uh, 